Hi, everybody, and happy Thursday. Welcome to another another uh, version, excuse me. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of <laughs> Vegan Ish. I am Dr. Monique, your host, who you know as a physician in the kitchen. Thank you so much for joining. On this show, we talk about all things plant-based. I talk about my plant-based journey and bring you along with my tips, tricks, aha moments, and everything in between. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for joining. How are you today, Mr. Ellis? <laughs> I am good. You know, it, it, it's funny. It's like, that is when you're doing live streaming, you don't get a you don't get a second take. You don't get a second, but you keep going. You just keep going. I hope nobody was really listening when you made the mistake. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Well, welcome to the fastest thirty minutes of my day. I tell you guys that every week because it really is, and that just means we're having fun. I'm having a ball and trying to get everything in. So we're gonna get started here shortly. But first, you know what we do here: rep your city. Tell us where you are watching us from, uh, from coast to coast, you know, continent to continent, wherever. We're here for all of it. So drop your 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 zip code, your city, your town. Let us know where you're watching us from. And because sharing is caring, be sure to tap somebody on the shoulder and say, hey, come on in this house and fellowship with us because Dr. Monique is talking about something healthy. So just come on. In. You don't need to know what it is. Just tell them to come on in. So how has your week been going so far, Mr. Ellis? It's been busy. Uh, we have uh, got a big, um, big series of Facebook. Live. We have another virtual summit next week on Tuesday. It's our Healthy Kids Summit. So kids are going back to school. And so we have five panel discussions all about, you know, keeping your kids healthy and safe and these kind of, you know, let's just say it's roller coaster type times, right? Because of with, with, with regards to their health, but they're going back to school. Many schools are not, they're abandoning masks and uh, mask you know, mandates. And so uh, we know that COVID, the rates are rising uh, and it's harder to get a handle on it now because people are testing at home and may or may not reveal what the results of those tests are. Right. Uh, we've got a new variant out there. BA5 is out there uh, wrecking <laughs> havoc. And uh, now we've got monkeypox. Monkeypox. Right? <laughs> yes, so, fun, fun times, fun times. Yeah, so it, it's a perilous times. And you know, when kids go to school, they get, they get exposed not only to the germs, but they get exposed to the germs with all of their classmates and they're bringing their germs in. And so there's a lot of exchange that happens in the school. And so, and so we wanted to help parents keep their kids safe and then give them some tips and techniques that, um, that they may not always know about, like, you know, dental health and mental health and, and, and vision health. Uh, so we, we're going to cover the whole gambit on Tuesday. So I've been working on getting all the guests and writing run of shows. And so that, that's been my week. And Sounds busy, busy, busy. <laughs> we're, And we're going to touch on some of that that you spoke about because, um, you know, as we talk about uh, eating healthy fruits, vegetables, things like that, of course, it, you know, what role does it play? What, how does it help you? So we're going to touch on some of that that you've, you've, you've spoken about. Um, so, yeah. So for me, I mentioned last week that I was soon to be an empty nester. So college, Kid all moved in, dropped him off last week. Uh, yesterday was the first day of class for him. So um, he's adjusting, he's adjusting. He, he texted me the first night, how are you holding up? I was like, I think I'm okay. <laughs> I think I'm okay. <laughs> so I'm so excited for him. It's hard for me to be sad. It really is because I'm just... I'm so excited for him. And I was looking at his, his college schedule and that, it took me back 30 years when I was in college. I was like, those Monday, Wednesday, Friday and those Tuesday, Thursday classes. So a lot of, you know, the, the only thing that stays the same in life is that there's going to be change, right? Yes. And so it's, it's how you how you address it, how you, you know, your mindset, how you face it is is how, if, whether it's going to be good change or bad change for you. So, okay, so folks are starting to trickle in. We've got Palm Beach, Florida, Southern California, Chicago. The Midwest is usually the first to chime in. This week, we've got the Southeast. Um, we've got Atlanta and Milton Keynes. You in the, the UK. Wow. I told you guys, continent to continent. I love it. So we've got Europe represented tonight. I love it, love it, love it. So, and uh, don't forget, be sure to tag folks. Let them know that we are here uh, because we're going to get into the next color on our rainbow journey and a Bay Area. So another, another uh, West Coast. So 
Thank you all so much for watching. So if you've been watching the past few weeks, we've been doing this kind of, you know, follow the yellow brick road, um, you know, eat the rainbow kind of thing, right? So we've covered red and blue and green. Well, we had red and purple. Red and purple, red and That's purple, right. yeah. and but we did we blue blue slash purple. We kind of lumped them together a little bit there, mm -hmm. and then um, Minneapolis. There we go. We got the Midwest coming in now. Um, thank you so much for for tuning in. So this week we're gonna do yellow. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, one of my favorite yellow foods is in season right now, and that is sweet summer corn. Mm -hmm. So, oh, my goodness. I just had some the other day, put it on the grill and just charred it a little bit. Oh, my goodness. It's so good. So if I'm going to have Ellis go ahead and put that slide up for us with all of our pretty yellow fruits and vegetables. And as we're doing that, if you guys can go ahead and start just chiming in with like we do every week, chiming in with some of your favorite yellow look how beautiful that is just wow. look at that isn't that gorgeous <laughs> like it makes me want to eat literally everything on that slide <laughs> so we're going to get into it um the kind of one by one but as a class or as a as a color i guess i should say we're going to talk about what yellow does how how yellow does a body good so Ellis, before i get into that when you as you look at this as you see what we've some representation here that we've got of yellow foods kind of what's your favorite which one leaps out at you I, i'm a big fan of pineapple i knew I you just, were gonna say that i, just, I knew you were gonna say pineapple i'm just i'm just a florida boy i'm a beach boy and pineapple just goes with my whole kind of vibe so yeah i i, I guess down with some pineapple <laughs> oh my goodness, what's not to like? It's sweet and juicy. But I have to say, to this day, the best pineapple I've ever had in my life was actually in Grand Cayman. It was wow. okay. amazing. It just was, it just tasted so sweet. I've been chasing that that high ever since. <laughs> but um, <laughs> it was incredible. It was, it was, oh my goodness, it was a perfect piece of fruit. But yeah, so we've got, so as I mentioned, corn is, is one of my favorites, but we're going to yes. talk about yellow squash, yellow bell peppers, which actually have more vitamin C than citrus fruits. People don't always realize that. Uh, bananas, that we've got some jackfruit there, golden beets. And when you, I, they're not really easy to find in my area. I, we have a lot of, of course, the regular beets, but when I do find those golden beets, I, I would love to cook with those because I imagine they're even a little sweeter than the, than the red ones. Um, yellow beets. Beans. Visually, they look better just for the right and then, Well, and if you have beet issues, then you might, these might be a little more palatable to you. Um, you've got the yellow beans, lemon, of course, and pineapple. Lemon, lemon, lemon gets down. Y'all don't understand how versatile that piece of fruit is. You just don't understand. Lemon is, and that's my favorite flavor. Like if when we have chocolate, vanilla, lemon, strawberry, lemon hands down my favorite um so we've got some star fruit there we'll talk a little bit more about that mango yellow cauliflower which again when you can find it it's, it's not always you know easily found but it's 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 very pretty when you do see it and then of course golden apples now everything of course is not on this list um but this is just to kind of jump start the conversation hi there suffolk virginia we've got lynn call, call, call it in or watching us from um i'm not lynn Put where you're from. I don't. I know you're. Oh, I, think Lynn's, New York. I think Lynn's in New York. I want to say Lynn's in New York. York. I want to say that too, but I, I'm I'm drawing a blank right now. So let's get into kind of why yellow foods are good, and just just from their visual appearance, yellow foods are thought to just boost our moods. Just mm. just seeing them, and and I think you know I've I've heard or I've read about like painting rooms yellow like having a yellow wall in your room is thought to be very calming very soothing so we were so wrong we were dead wrong <laughs> orlando well east coast I, I i meant to say she was on the east on the east coast <laughs> My apologies, Lynn. You you yes. a person like I, I am. Was, uh -huh. I was down there um, a few well back in July. We, we did the whole Orlando, the uh, Universal thing. So yes, Orlando. So the color yellow has been found to be very soothing. And so these foods are thought to just boost your mood just by their appearance or just from just looking at them. But uh, we're going to kind of get into what they what they do. So each week we've talked about what the name of the chemical is, the, the phytonutrient or the phytochemical that gives the particular fruit or vegetable its color. And so for yellow, 
um, fruits and vegetables. It is um, beta carotene, which we also see in orange fruits mm -hmm. and vegetables, um, and then also bioflavonoids as well. So they, they also contain lycopene, which you may remember from when we talked about red foods because it's found in tomatoes. Um, and that was something that we talked about was good for men's prostates. Well, you're going to get some of that benefit here as well. And interestingly, in... Um, Yellow grapefruit, which I, I found interesting. Yellow grapefruit has lycopene, uh, not as much as the regular, the pink one. But mm -hmm. again, those those levels are thought to have um, benefit for men and prostate health. So good to know. So let's see. I just got a great question. Yeah, let's see. Two things that is on this group and that I've been told have no healthy value are bananas other than potassium. Eating too much isn't healthy. Is that true? I'm, I'm not familiar with that. I don't know why bananas would not be considered healthy. Um, we're going to get into, um, they actually have, they, some people think they can help with weight loss. They, of course, are a great source of fiber. Um, you can use them as an egg replacement, you know, mashed or pureed bananas can be used as an egg replacement in things like, you know, banana nut bread or uh, zucchini bread. Um, so I'm not familiar with that at all. I don't, I don't know. Well, why so to, to Michael's that. point, so Michael, again, you know, as we put at, at the beginning of the show, this is for entertainment place. You know, purposes only is not to supplant that, but I would say research that a little bit because I have I have heard that because my mother uh, has a high cholesterol and she avoids corn for that, and that's part of that reasoning is that and, and so there is some you know amount of truth in it. So I would say let's you know talk to your your doctor about that, and then the same thing with with uh, with bananas, but I think it's more of like the overeating of it for the potassium. Potassium is good for you to a point, and then I think at some point it, 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 you can get you can get over the top, but the more so. Bananas really, people have that, that bananas really don't have a whole lot of potassium. People think, oh, I'm cramping, let me eat a banana. It really doesn't have as much. And, and so some of that is kind of folklore and it's not scientifically yeah. proven. And I wonder if that's true about the corn and the bananas as well, because again, um, you know, they're going to be more, they're going to be fruits and vegetables that have more of a certain nutrient or more of a nutritional value than others. But to say it has no healthy value, I don't, I don't know that that's true. You know what has more potassium than bananas or just as much and that people consume way more than bananas? Uh, soda. Coke, Coke uh, but soda yeah. also has, um, Phosphorus, which is not good. Mm -hmm. that, there's that balance there that's not. That's oh, maybe, not it's, maybe it's the phosphorus. Okay. So, maybe. phosphorus, yeah. Sodas mm -hmm. are high in phosphorus, which can cause problems with bone health. Okay. So, um, maybe that's what you're thinking of. But, you know, corn, again, you know, fiber, all of these are going to be a great source of fiber, no, no matter, you know, at a minimum. And as we've talked about before on this show, most Americans do not get enough fiber in their diet. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're going to have an ear of corn, count that towards your fiber content. And so from, from my standpoint, that makes it healthy. <laughs> so Harold said banana makes his lips tingle. Yeah, obviously <laughs> if any of these, if you have allergic type symptoms, definitely, you know, don't want to eat them. Um, but yeah, so that's, the, anybody can have any kind of reaction to any of these at any time. So definitely if you know that, stay away. But, um, but yeah, and if you think about corn, um, it's used in a lot of things as well, as far as, you know, we get cornmeal from it, we make cornbread. Mm -hmm. So um, it has a lot of uses. And for the um, the um, for the amount that people should be using, uh, I would say all in all, it, it, the, the benefits outweigh the risk or, or give it um, give it a, a healthier profile than I think um, maybe what you're what you're familiar with. So, um, but yeah, so it's, so as we go through this list, so of course, mango, which um, is, I know this is uh, <laughs> mango is delicious. It is delicious. And it's, I'm about to go to the Caribbean on Saturday and I, I can't wait. Cause I'm just like, you know, I got to get some, some fresh mango while I'm there. Um, this is one of those ones I kind of discovered a little later in life. Um, mm -hmm. But now that I have, I'm like, Oh my God, it's amazing. But remember, you know, if you can't get it fresh locally, frozen is just as good and you can throw it in a smoothie, right? So yeah. keep some with your, if you've got some tropical frozen fruits in your, in your freezer, some strawberries, all of that stuff, some, I throw an avocado, some frozen avocado in there, some spinach can make a wonderful, wonderful smoothie. So just keep those, you know, in mind, because sometimes you may not have access to some of these in, in season 
or when they're at their highest peak of freshness. But don't forget about the frozen option because, you know, for, for frozen fruits and vegetables, a lot of that nutritional content is just as good as when it's fresh for the most part. You know, there's a show idea for us. Uh, we're not, we can't talk about it today, but maybe we should do a show on uh, the, the seasons and what, what fruits and vegetables are in season. I know we, well, we, that did. we did talk about that before. We did. We talked about it, and we, but it's always, I think, a, a, a seasonal topic because <laughs> um, it's going to vary, of course, depending on where you are in the country. Right. Um, but I think the take home from that show was really find out what's in season um, because you want to get it at its peak. And you know, if you freeze stuff or can stuff yourself at home, you can really, you know, stock up, stock your your freezer. And that's a great time to hit your farmers markets because. Yeah they're going to have a lot of the local produce that's in season. So, you know, it, that that might be a good time to start to explore farmer's markets if those are, are available to you. And it's a good way to save some money because when you buy stuff in, in season, it tends to be lower it's in cost yep. versus buying it out of season. So you can keep your grocery bill down by buying fruits and vegetables that are in season. And it just tastes better. You can, you can really <laughs> taste, taste the difference. So um, pineapple, we talked about, they are known or thought to help with indigestion as well as in reducing inflammation. So, you know, they're sweet and juicy and they also have the benefit of reducing inflammation throughout your, throughout your body. And as we've talked about before, inflammation is kind of the trigger for a yeah. lot of the chronic diseases that we see. So um, Lynn said, Farmer's Almanac, do they still make that? I think they do. I think you can go to like, you know, this place that people used to frequently call a bookstore. You know, <laughs> oh, I'm sure there's an app. There probably is it's a Farmer's a, Almanac app. I would think. Maybe you know, it's funny. Like my mother grew up in, in in rural kind of you know South Carolina, and her her grandmother had a farm, so she was spending. So she knows like almost automatically what what's in season. Like she, she, it's like it's all in her head. Oh, that's not in season. No, we, you know, oh, this yeah. is, in and it's like, wow. Like I wish I had that ability, just to, you know, the, the time just to study and know that because it would just make things a lot easier. You know, it's so interesting. I, as I've mentioned before, I'm, I'm actually finishing up culinary school, and we did a class on seasonality of foods, and. It, uh, one of the professor or the instructor made the correlation that foods come into season when our body needs the nutrients that they have. So, for mm -hmm. example, watermelon, as we know, is, of course, is summer, you know, melons and watermelon. But why? Because they're they're very hydrating during the summer months. And yeah. so I was like, wow, you know, I never, you know, really thought about that. Um, you know, uh, what's the other one? Um, the citrus fruits tend to be in in season later in the year, fall and winter, because why? They have high levels of vitamin C, which help boost your immune system. Yeah. So it's really, once you start to really look into that, it's really, I found it very, very interesting. But yeah, Farmer's, Farmer's Almanac, I remember that as a little girl. I remember <laughs> seeing those, but um, didn't know that that was still a thing. That's that's good to know. So and so as you as you guys are listening or watching, please go ahead and start dropping in some of the ones we've talked about ones that people don't like, but let's talk about some of those yellow foods that you do like, a recipe or a way that you prepare them. Um, because the other thing that we like to talk about as we as we go through this rainbow is um being open to trying these foods in a different way. You know, you've, you may have a, your uh, tried and true way of making something, but when you do something in, a, in an alternative way, it can open things up like bananas, using it as an egg replacement. So um, she dated herself. <laughs> well, I'm right there with you. So we, we're, we're in the same boat. Um, so that's a, that's a, a way to, to kind of expand your palate, expand your, your repertoire as well. I do want to say something about the, the star fruit mm. because I actually, have you, have, you, have you ever had it, Ellis? Have you tasted it? I, ha I have not. It's an interesting, um, it's an interesting fruit. I actually, was, I saw one, I try to, when I go to the grocery store from time to time, I try to get something new, you know, like, then what is that? I'll go, I'll buy it and come home and look it up and, and try it out. Um, it's very, it's juicy. It's a very juicy fruit. And it's kind of a cross between, like, how would I describe it? It's I thought it was actually kind of bland. It was a very mild taste to me. Okay. Um, a little bit on the sweet side, a little tart. Um, 
But to me, it kind of was like almost like a kiwi. Mm. And I, I don't know, maybe I'm trying to think what the other flavor in it was, but it, to me, it was pretty mild. So if anyone else has experience with star fruit, let us know. Lynn said uh, good stuff. Her neighbor had a tree full of of star fruit or something else. Because if you if you're the expert on star fruit, please chime in. Let us know. So it looks but, juicy. Just for, based on the picture, it looks juicy. So I would, you know, based on what we're talking about in terms of seasonality, it looks like it's more of a kind of a summer where you can get, get some of that, get some of that. Um, yeah, she's a, yeah, okay, star yeah, fruit. So yeah, it looks like some, more of a summer fruit. Um, and with you being from Florida, uh, Lynn, uh, you, you probably know about it. <laughs> about it's it's probably, it's, it's just, it's a cute little fruit. I mean, it, cause you, the, when you cut it, when you slice it, that's how you get those stars. It's shaped kind of like a, it's kind of like a cylindrical shape almost, but then when you cut it, you get those pretty star shapes. So it, that's that's where um, the name comes from. So uh, we've talked about citrus in the in the past as far as um, the role of vitamin C and so forth, but also yellow citrus is thought to lower the sugar load for diabetics from, from starchy, starchy foods. Ooh. And also it may help prevent stomach ulcers. And people think, well, how can that be? You know, citric, citric, citric acid, but <clears throat> the, the phytonutrients that are in citrus fruits um, are thought to help to help protect the stomach from, from excess acid or from, excuse me, from gastric ulcers. Now, I do want to add to that, though, that when people have a reflux or heartburn, which is different from from ulcers, one of the things we do advise that they cut back on, though, is uh, is citrus because that can actually aggravate reflux. So okay. it depends on what you have. If you have ulcers, it might be protective, but reflux, it can actually aggravate. Hi there, Agnes, watching from NYC. Welcome, welcome. So the star fruit five figure, it does look like five. I can see that. I can totally see that. So we're just on here talking about, if you're just joining us, we're talking about yellow fruits and vegetables and the health benefits they have. And this slide is just representative of some of, 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 of more, more, more common ones. But as we mentioned, it can instantly boost your mental health, mental wellness um, health, mental wellness levels, as well as improve your skin health, your hair health, bone health, and dental health. So you talked about um, your upcoming show on dental health. So this might be something you want to uh, encourage people to do. Um, and also because of the, the vitamin C, it helps to promote the, your body's production of collagen which is again found in the skin as well as the joints and is it kind of considered to be like an anti-aging um component if you think about it for those of us who go get facials or use skin products vitamin c is often added to some of those products so what better way than to get it naturally than getting your fruits they're selling collagen in grocery stores right now for like you get like a scoop and you pour it in your water or your or your favorite drink but it's like Fifty dollars on some yes. of those some of those jars, mm -hmm. you know, like forty something dollars for a, a, a can of collagen. Well, I believe it, but remember, we talked about this before. We did our vegan or not nah segments. Collagen can actually not be may not be vegan because it's if it's an animal product. Right. So you want to keep that in mind if you're really if you're truly trying to be vegan, you're probably not going to be getting that that store that collagen because you want to check that source because that tends to be an I'm you could get it from from your from your food and not have to buy it exactly. You know? exactly so we are actually coming up on the bottom of our of our time but I just wanted to kind of just put this out here and we've as we've talked about before lemons and and other citrus do not forget about the zest right that's like leaving money on the table Ooh, if yes. you are not zesting your citrus <laughs> because it adds so much flavor to to you know just elevates that citrus that lemon flavor um, and all of these, of course, contain what? Antioxidants. We've talked about antioxidants before. Mm -hmm. We Those antioxidants help to protect and uh, some of the damage, to protect us from the damage of day-to-day -day living, from mm -hmm. radiation, from tobacco smoke, from pollution, from sunlight, you name it. So antioxidants are, they go out there and they gobble up those free radicals, which is what uh, causes damage to our tissues and leads to those chronic inflammatory, chronic inflammatory conditions that we often see. Right. And then of course, they're a great source of fiber as well. So speaking of lemon, you know, I'm, I'm always 
I'm a big fan of, of lemon. And so in my, in my book, Doc Fix My Plate, I actually have a lemon pound cake recipe. It's vegan and gluten-free. So if you're looking for a lemon recipe, there's one. Now it is cake, so I'm not telling you to go out and eat the whole thing in one sitting. But if you're <laughs> looking for a, a vegan or a gluten-free option, uh, lemon pound cake, it is um, that, that's there for you to, to consider. So I think we've kind of covered everything that I wanted to, to hear. But yeah, um, don't forget about your um it, it, don't forget about your like mango, your um, excuse me, yellow peppers, your squash, which are technically fruits, right? Mm -hmm. Because they have their seeds. But just think about different ways you can use those, incorporate those into different recipes and really just expand your your flavor profile because, you you know, you'd be amazed if you kind of get used to eating something a certain way all the time. And then when you just switch it up, you're like, this is actually really it's good in a different way. Or if you're if you're reluctant to try something new, try it um, so that you can you can just, you know, you never know. You may discover like your new favorite thing. <laughs> I'm always a big fan of, of, of trying new things because I know, you know, green green peppers, bell peppers in particular, are the most common, right? You can find those almost anywhere. And because they're the cheapest. <laughs> yeah, they're the cheapest, right? But, uh, but if you're cutting those up and you, you know, spend a little bit more and get the red, get the yellow, get the orange, that color, that eat the rainbow really comes into play in, in, a, in a stew or in, in any dish. You can slice them up, uh, julienne, put them, you know, just caramelize them real quick in a pan, some olive oil. You can make your own bowls. Like, you know, people always make these bowls. Like you can make some bowls with quinoa, some, some tricolored peppers and all kinds of, so, and onions. And, and it really is very, very good. It's healthy. And, it, you know, yes, the, the colored, you know, outside of green are a little bit more expensive, but they're worth it because, the you know, you eat with your eyes first, right? And exactly. so- Having that color on your on in your bowl on your plate really increases your appetite and, and makes things go down really well. And I, I find them to be a little sweeter than the green and be a little yep. just a little bit more flavorful um, as well. And so and you know you can do so much with them from omelets to chili to you know um, burritos. I mean you name it. So lots of different things you can do, and they're just a wonderful source of fiber as well. So mm -hmm. you know they they really um, check a lot of boxes. So that is all we have for today. We are going to be back in two weeks. Two weeks. And I think we've got, we're going to talk about, we've got one more stop on the, on the rainbow before we wrap up this series. So you got to tune in to watch that. So Robin says she loves yellow squash, red bell pepper and greens. Oh my God. So good. Love them all. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Robin, I, well, I, I, I'd love that you love yellow squash. I would love to know Kind of, what's your favorite way to prepare it? Are you sauteing them? Are you grilling them? Mm. You know, because there's a lot of different things you could do with that. I normally cook them in a wok. I, I cut them up with some um, so with some, them. some green uh, with zucchini. So a stir fry. Yep. Stir fry, and then I do a little garlic, a little olive oil in the pan, and then some some onion, and just you know, quick wok, spin around, turn them over in a wok. That's right. Yeah, they don't take long if you, if especially if you slice them kind of on the thinner side. They do not mm -hmm. take long at all. So I love it. I love it. So we we give you we give you recipes. We give you we give you ideas. We we cover it all on this show. I love it. So Man, I, I love that idea. I'm gonna try that red bell pepper and greens because now you're getting that you're getting that double vitamin C. You get the vitamin C for the red bell pepper. You get the vitamin C from the greens. You're really doubling it up, and you've got nice visual because you've got it's that beautiful. Christmas the look from there. The exactly. Exactly. Fantastic. It's a great idea, and Lynn. Get it with a little heat too. And you, you, you got oh, yeah. it. Got it. Oh yeah. <laughs> I stay with some cayenne in my, in my cabinet. If I don't have cayenne, little cayenne, <laughs> little cayenne pepper. Oh, I'm, right. I'm a, I'm a wimp when it comes to heat, but it, but it like some, you know, some red chili flakes. I think you know, just the amount, uh, right amount, and some. I'm I, 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 it from the from the. The, on the top of the food heat, right? Like the hot sauce, I moved away from that. I like it in worked in. So cayenne so, pepper, uh, red pepper flakes, things of that nature, chili, uh, you know, those type of things, but not just the, I'm going to smother it in hot sauce. You know. Yeah, because all you're eating, all you're tasting is a hot sauce. Uh, they taste good sliced in eggs and onion scrambled in eggs. So it's just, okay, nice. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, well, yeah, definitely, definitely. In your, in your yellow squash, it, 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 it eggs? Wow, that's. Oh, I thought you were talking about the 
You asked that's right. The squash, the squash. I'm, I'm sorry, I've been thinking about the peppers. But no, right. You were talking about the squash. That's different. That is different. Okay. okay. You See? had to try to put that in your test kitchen. You had to do something <laughs> different. Because I would I would never have thought to put that together. So yeah. but instead of, instead of eggs, if we're keeping it vegan, we might do a little bit of some tofu with that, maybe. Don't make that girl, girl, look, that look. Is. Use your eggs, okay? Don't make that face. <laughs> On that note, you the ish or the like, vegan ish? You ish. <laughs> You're the ish. That's right. So you, I hope you all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your week going into your weekend. Be sure to make healthy, healthy choices and invest in your health one plate at a time. Until next week, I am Dr. Mo, or until two weeks, I am Dr. Monique, your board certified physician who you know as a physician in the kitchen. Thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to tag others, share this, and leave your comments and your questions, and we'll try to get to them as, as, as many as we can. Until next time. See y'all.